Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. We are looking at the week of August 17th to the 23rd, 2020. This is the last week of being in the star sign of Leo. So, um, time flies, so to speak. But before we look into the um, star signs, we look at the overall energy uh, for the week ahead. Let's have a look what we got. Right, we have two things. We have the Dancer of Inspiration and the Dancer of Reconciliation. What that means is that when you look at the term dancing, it's movement. So it also means um, higher energy. And the Dancer of Inspiration is basically telling you that in the week of August the 17th to the 23rd, this is the week where things are finally moving or if things are really moving for you, they will get another push. So that's a really uh, uh, a positive thing uh, for the overall energy. On the other hand side, we have the Dancer of Reconciliation, which means there are things that you need to make peace with. Dancing also means sort of pussyfooting around stuff. Um, so what they're saying is it might not all be positive, but this is also time to sort of come to terms with stuff, maybe let even let things go. But overall, for the overall energy of the week ahead, it's really saying we're moving, higher energy, positive energy, way to go. Right? So that was that. Now let's have a look at the, um, the star signs, shall we? Going into Leo. <laughs> Leos. You have the Hunter of Path um, and the Shaman of Reflection. So what they're saying is you're not quite done figuring out where to go, what to do next, which means you're still a hunter, the hunting, uh, the hunt is still on, so to speak, but it's, it's more like a hunt of figuring out where to go next. It doesn't necessarily have to be a massive thing, but it's not a negative thing at all because keep hunting, if that makes sense, for your path uh, because you're definitely on the right track already and you have the Shaman of Reflection, which means before you can even move into um, or onto a new path, for want of a better word, you have to first stop for a little bit and look at things and say like, okay, so what has worked thus far? What hasn't quite worked? What is it I don't really want to experience any longer? And what is it I really enjoyed about my journey and want to continue? Which also means you have a much more focused or you have a much better focus, which also then helps opening up a path that works for you, right? That was Leo. And then next week, we're going to start this with Virgo because we're moving into that star sign actually on the 23rd which is the last day of, of the week ahead because we're looking at the week of August 17th to 23rd, 2020 going into Virgo right now. Ready? <laughs> Virgos, you have the beaver and you have the barn owl. I say that every time when the beaver comes up <laughs> because it's a cute little guy you are the builder of bridges. It means that when you have responsibility for other beings, um, manifest, and this is important, manifest what it is you want. Because the universe knows that whoever is with you is your unit. And they will always keep them safe. But if you manifest for the unit, they get what you, what you probably manifest, but you won't. So please manifest for yourself. You are the builder of bridges, which means people and situations uh, and maybe workplace even um, in a way relies on your input. So you have to be rested at all times um, and manifest what you want to happen. So you have a better outlook from where you, you are. If that makes sense because you have the barn owl, which is basically that animal that, that, What's the word? 
you you don't you shouldn't limit yourself right the barn owl is basically that animal that, that well it's symbolism symbolism uh, symbology that has a whole barn and in that barn is where you compartmentalize your thoughts right so and the barn in itself can be a limit and can be limited mind can be limited mind and, and thoughts and so what the guides are saying is number one you have a barn which means you have space in which to grow uh, from where to set out to do new things and you can do this in uh, in, in perfect safety if that makes sense so um, that's basically for Virgo please manifest what you want to happen as a person rather than as a unit okie dokie so looking at libra there we go libra should take a step backwards this week because you have to be you have to you have the bear and the ground talk so what they're saying is you're in the middle of actually healing and cleansing and going through stuff that needs to be released and you're releasing now and you're healing now so these patterns that hurt you that make you end up in discomfort will not repeat themselves right so you're letting go of quite a bit of stuff um, but you really should do this by stepping back a bit allowing yourself some time to actually heal Okie dokie, short and sweet for Libra. Going into Scorpio. Mm. <laughs> right, Scorpio, you have the Jaguar and the Leopard. Again, it's symbolism. Number one, you are unique. You have unique spots. You may not fit in everywhere nor do you need to okay just always look at your individuality and see it as a strength and not as a weakness because it is of weaknesses that these animal guides speak of when they come through leopard and and um, jaguar because they have unique dots and then sometimes they turn into the panther. Panther, can't pronounce the H, panther. <laughs> Which means, symbolism again, there's a part of you that is still hiding your individuality, your very own essence sometimes. And I think, and generally speaking, what I'm getting is that you might actually do this for the greater good. And all the guides are saying, you don't have to do anything for the greater good because you being there is already a service and a positive thing for the greater good. So don't hide. Make yourself known. Bring forward your opinions. Um, don't worry when people don't necessarily get you. It's their loss. Okay? That was that. That was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Not a bad week, not a bad week for Sagittarius because you have the dog, which is basically the animal that says, be loyal, be loyal to yourself. And you can see there's overlapping energy already where, um, you know, your uniqueness is important, just like in the, in the, um, earlier star sign that we just had which was Scorpio um, now we're with Sagittarius what they're saying is this because you have the dog and all animal deities here's what that means loyalty starts with you look at what it is you need look at what it is that fulfills you and then follow that path and you have all your guides already around you to support you on that journey 
So it's time now to, to stop worrying about things and also um, it's time to stop always being in the background, if that makes sense, right? Stop being in the background, be forceful almost in, um, in expressing how you truly feel and what you want. Okay, that's that. Again, there seems to be an overlapping energy going on, which is oftentimes the case. Um, just let me say this again. We're looking at the week of, week of August the 17th to the 23rd, 2020. And uh, now we're going into Capricorn. Here we have another panther. <laughs> we have the panther and the coyote. Excuse me. So for Capricorn, what that means is you too are partly hiding, but you wouldn't mess with a big cat, would you? No, you wouldn't. Nobody messes with a panther if, there is an, if they are in their right mind. So it's all symbolism. What the guides are saying to you is you have a strength that is your own, that won't allow people to take advantage of you, but if you step back to make space to look at what their needs are first, you could lose a part of yourself and you shouldn't and you mustn't do this because you have the coyote. So the coyote is a scavenger, which means even if you are change your changes in life, you are, you are recon reconsidering um, your priorities, changing your priorities, could mean that not everybody gets it, not everybody comes along, if that makes sense. And the coyote is basically the animal guide that says to you, so what? There will always be enough for you to go around. That doesn't mean to be super selfish. It just means that you have to look at in the scheme of things. Am I the person that always supports others and therefore I come last? And then change that and be uh, and look into uh, equality. Okie dokie, that was Capricorn. Going into Aquarius or Aquarius, I can never quite pronounce that, you know. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. For Aquarius, you have the spirit of challenge and the shaman of song, which means although, although this week could or probably will start off with challenges, with changes. Um, and maybe some of them are a bit, um, bit unexpected, which is often what changes, what change can be. It happens oftentimes suddenly. So even though you might be hit by some changes uh, or change situations that are out of your control, where you kind of go like, whoa, <laughs> you know, what now? Because you have the shaman of song, what that really means is once you go, you don't go into panic. Once you kind of go like, okay, it's a new situation. I just have to make some changes in how I go about life then. Um, you will be perfectly fine. So if changes are coming your way this week that are potentially upsetting to you, what the guides are saying is don't be upset. Just trust that you will be fine. And you just need to say, yeah. I got this, I just need to tweak things a little and we will be fine. Okie dokie, that was Aquarius going into Pisces, which is my star sign. Let's see what we got for Pisces. Interesting. Week 17th to the 23rd. For us Pisces, we do not have to be in the thick of things at all this week. We need some me time. We need some time to, to um, reflect is not necessarily what comes to mind. What comes to mind is, is just rest, if that makes sense. And when, when, I, when, when the guide said you have to be in the thick of it, it just means not every problem that comes your way, that someone shares with you, is yours 
to feel burdened by. You can be supportive as Pisces. We can be supportive, but feeling it um, isn't always helpful. So because we have the horse, which means make some space for your own things. Um, that's important for us Pisces this week, just to be a little bit detached from stuff and observe rather than being, like the guys have said, in the thick of it. Because also we have the snake, which is the animal of health and protection. You go to a pharmacy, you see a snake around the cane, right? So it is a, a sign of health. And what that really means is if we detach ourselves a little bit from anything and everything that's going on, we have a chance to um, recharge our batteries and we'll be all the better for it. So just to clarify this, Nobody says, do fuck all. <laughs> okay, pardon my French, you understand? Nobody says, leave everything um, and, and, and walk off. That's not what the guys have suggested. But what they're saying is sometimes being in the thick of things and thinking, you know, you have to always be there and, um, you know, be forceful and, 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 and change things and support is not the best idea this week. It's just... Have a little bit of space for yourself so you can recharge your battery. Um, and normally, in my experience at least, is when this comes up uh, in this week, then very likely we will be needed even more in the weeks to come. Okay, that was Pisces. Like I said, my star sign. And now we're going into Aries. Okay, Aries, time to reflect. Look at your life and acknowledge how much, uh, how much you have achieved. Realize that you have made progress already, even if you feel you're stuck and you feel like, oh, nothing really works. That's not true. Just look at the things that you got and you will see that you have made progress in the scheme of things. Um, remember the overall energy this week was that we have a renewed energy to move forward. It feels somewhat stumped, but not halted this week for Aries because you have made progress. And here's what is important. You have the, the Wolverine, which is the animal that tells you about progress and you have the mouse. And the mouse is one of those few rodents that is not scared of heights. It just means that whatever comes your way, you see it exactly for what it is. Therefore, nobody, nothing will, go, will get past you and nobody will, um, what's the word, um, deceive you, if that makes sense. And you see things coming that are just not right. And what the guides are saying is, just relax around it and things will be fine. But you need to realize that you have made progress because only with that renewed sense of, yes, I am doing good, is it easier for you to forge a new path ahead. Okay, that was Aries going into Taurus. Okay, <laughs> we have the Hunter of Abundance and the Shaman of Stars. What the guides are saying is, it's all symbolism, always symbolism. And what the guides are saying is this, you're still looking for more things to achieve. And some of you are actually looking for more things to have. Remember, sometimes when we feel like, oh, I want to buy this and I want to buy this, it could be that it is one of those emotional um, purchases where you feel if I have this I feel better <laughs> right even though I, I, I don't get this for for all um, Tauruses but because you have the hunt of abundance which means you're you're still looking for more to achieve it just means that this week is probably a week where nothing is good enough and nothing works fast enough we already know from dealing with your star sign almost every week, 
is that Tauruses, unfortunately, sometimes can really be their worst enemies. You can be in your own way, and it's easy for Tauruses, or for many Tauruses, to um, convince yourself that you never get it right. And all the guides are saying is that self-deflating and self-defeating don't do it, right? Because you have the Shaman of Stars, which means while you're looking for what next, what else can I achieve? What the guides are saying is your thoughts should be, am I growing spiritually? How can I grow spiritually? And look at the spiritual side of your being and make that a priority this week. Because ultimately, when you are with spirit and when you are more in a spiritual flow, um, things will be much easier for you to see. Okay? That was Taurus having only two star signs left, meaning Gemini and Cancer. We're now looking at Gemini. And like I said, we're looking at the week of August 17th to 23rd. If I'm not mistaken, I think Uranus is going into retrograde uh, or was going into retrograde on the 15th. Somehow, I don't feel like talking about it. Um, Uranus is always um, um, sort of the bringer of, of changes. And so sometimes things are hard to grasp. But because the overall energy this week for us all is to um, just focus and remember we have a renewed energy, somehow the whole Uranus chain thing doesn't feel it applies uh, to the energy of the week, at least the way the guides make me feel that, right? So we're just ignoring Uranus, if that makes sense. Here we go. So we have Gemini. You have the red-headed woodpecker and the arctic wolf. Oh, that sounds a bit weird. You don't need anyone to succeed. Now, the guides have not said for you out there, you know, let your partners go, walk away. That's not what I hear. But what the guides are saying is, trust your own intuition, trust your own judgments, because you don't need anyone to truly su succeed. But, and here's the, is the but, because you have a second animal guide, which is the Arctic wolf, even though you can be in charge and ought to be in charge of your own destiny. You have, there's, a, there's a vulnerable side to you this week, which means why go it alone? Okay, so all the guides are saying to you, to cut a long story short, is to remember that um, if anyone doesn't let you speak your mind, they need to be put in their place. Simple, right? So that you know my opinion is important too and then at the same time reach out to the people that you are closest to um, when you're vulnerable okay so that was uh, gemini now going into the last star sign of the week which is cancer cancerians let's have a look easy peasy for cancer <laughs> You have the hawk and the caribou. What that means is the hawk uses the upthrust of the air to glide. So what the guides are saying is, don't get annoyed by anything. Just glide through the week, right? Enjoy this week. Just don't get bucked down by things, be they little or big, right? This is the week to just glide and go with the flow. And because you have the caribou, which is basically a reindeer, <laughs> they have a split hoof. So when the terrain gets difficult, they're not gonna sink in. So what that really means is just go with the flow. And if any issues come your way, you will deal with them just fine. So energetically speaking, it feels to me that, that cancer, cancerians this week seem to have it the easiest. Provided you as a Cancerian out there do not forget that little things can rile you up and um, little things, small things can actually trigger your anxiety and then you go into overdrive 
And that's the only little thing to not do. Go with the flow, have some faith, trust that the universe will unfold as it should, for want of a better word, and just go with the flow and we're all good. That's all we have time for. We were looking at the week of August 17th to the 23rd, 2020. Please share this video widely um, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.